Now, it's alleged that community members are planning to shut down Maponya Mall today, and this is after meter taxi and e-hailing drivers were embroiled in yet another fight at the mall just last night. Videos on social media show people attacking others as well as their vehicles and cars are set on fire. ENC's Heidi Jockers is following that story for us, and she joins us now uh, to give us this update. Heidi, good morning to you. What's the latest? Yes, uh, I think it's going to be important, uh, Dumelo, to just get clarity on what exactly transpired yesterday. We are joined by the e-hailing association. Um, so if you could maybe just introduce yourself and tell us uh, from your understanding what happened yesterday. Uh, my name is Tago Ramayla, chairperson of Soweto United e-hailing association. And actually, basically, what happened yesterday is nothing merely just a crime. Uh, as an association collectively, we do not point fingers to any other tax association on the industry that have attacked any Uber or e-hailing drivers on the ground. And we feel that there's uh, criminal elements that are within the industry that wants to cause a commotion against us. And we've been in talks with the Texas, and under our impression is that we believe we are still on a good table with them. And everything is on understanding level. We've been allowed to work in malls, in any malls in Soweto. So if there's anybody that is attacking all the, the Uber drivers, uh, at this stage, until the police give all the investigations and the people are apprehended, we will be able to give a statement to say exactly who actually committed the crimes that were done yesterday. But we are not, not in any other uh, belief that any association would actually attack us. Okay, so there is an allegation that um, uh, there seems to be some Uber and Bolt drivers that are not registered and that are basically um, walking in and asking um, those who want to use the services to not to, to use the services and catch a ride without using the app at a cheaper price. Are you aware of this allegation? Yes, we are actually aware and it's not an allegation, it's actually a true fact of the matter on the ground. Um, we have a lot of drivers that Uber, Bold are blocking on the system and it puts them in a very dire, desperate situation whereby drivers now end up opening their own ranks in malls or any areas whereby they can find a way that they can sustain themselves. And that has actually created a commotion within the taxi industry because those people now, they have their, their e-hailing service actually, it has given them a platform to find a way to make ends meet. And now when they take it away from them by blocking them on the system, it gives them now an, a way to be desperate. And now they start doing their own ranks. Now of which now it causes confusion amongst drivers, communities, to say e-hailing drivers are the ones doing that, of which we are not the ones that are doing that, but the people that are blocked on the system by Uber and Bolt. Do you think that sparked what happened yesterday? Do you think there's an element of that that could have sparked it? Unfortunately, I cannot insinuate anything, but from the, our last week meeting that was conducted here at Maponya Mall, uh, we were under the impression, uh, we actually were told, and they were told that all the guys that are open and rancing malls must leave the mall and find another way of conducting business or register with Uber or Bolt. But that we, we could believe that could have spiked a certain anger amongst them, but we cannot point fingers to say exactly it's them that have committed this crime. Can you deny that there's been tensions brewing between taxi drivers and Uber e-hailing and these Amapera, as they call them? We're not denying any disputes amongst taxis and e-hailing drivers on the ground. But we do acknowledge that the communication level is actually not uh, at the right level because of uh, the problem within the government not to regulate the industry. If the government uh, could take an opportunity to look into the submitting of all the relevant documents that they're saying are sitting in the president's office and sign the amendment that they regulate the industry, we wouldn't be sitting here and struggling as black people. There's also reports that there could possibly be a shutdown today. No, there isn't no any announcement that we made as an association of any shutdown. What we precisely have in today is that we need all the stakeholders to come forward here at, Ma at Maponya Mall if they could or meet us at 1 o'clock at Clifton Police Station whereby we can discuss a way forward. Because at the end of the day, Uber and Paul doesn't care about any driver. So at the end of the day, we have to find a way that we can coexist in this industry while we're using the foreign apps. Has the um, taxi drivers responded to this in terms of the meeting that you're requesting for? By understanding of the center management of Maponya Mall, the, uh, the taxi industry will join us in a meeting at 1 o'clock at Lipdown Police Station.
Do you feel that the management here at Maponya Mall has not dealt with the issue, given this has been brewing for some time? Unfortunately, I feel that they've done over what they could have done. It's unfortunate that we have the challenges of the app companies that are creating such um, criminal elements on the ground. When you say the app is creating criminal elements, you're speaking about Uber and Bolt. You yes. feel as though they have created this secondary operation that's happening that could have resulted in the violence we saw yesterday. In short, to answer the question, I would say Uber and Bolt, it's a weapon of killing people on the ground. It's just that people don't know the truth about what they are doing to the drivers. It's just a matter of that if only the government and the communities would understand the predicament whereby the people that are killing the drivers on the ground that causes the frustration is because of Uber and Bolt do not bet clients. A client can actually download an app in two minutes and kill a driver in five minutes and none of those apps will actually account for that client. There is no vetting or any way you can actually trace that client. Even last week we were burying one of our colleagues in Naledi. The, the family could not even bury the, the, the gentleman. We had to organize ourselves with EPCO and other Johannesburg regions and Israel regions and collectively put money together and assist the family to bury our colleague. And we didn't even know that because the guy stayed in a mochari for two weeks. I want to ask you about um, the MEC for Gauteng and whether or not you feel that she should intervene. Previously, we saw the previous MEC of Transport intervening and bringing some sort of stability to this sector. Um, do you feel that the MEC needs to do something about this? How do you find a resolution to this? What do you think needs to be done to resolve this impasse? Uh, you know, the revolution in this industry is that we should not politicize this business. This is a business, not a political entity. And one thing that should uh, all the government is there that they should understand is that young guys are the ones that are driving Uber and e-hailing transports. It's children from the age of 18 years to the age of 25 years, lucky when you see the, the older people in the, in, the, in the business. Now, if they, at the end of the day, if they're going to politicize as a, if the MEC or the president himself should be the one who actually regu regulate the industry, it is pointless. This is a humanity thing. If people are dying on a daily basis on the industry, why can they have a heart to understand that this is not a matter of poli poli policies, but a matter of humanity? Look, I, I just want to hear from you. Are you not scared that this might spark uh, in other areas? Because as we've seen here, and usually how we know, if this thing starts small and then they, they usually uh, go up and, and they spark the Are you not worried that this, we might see this in the coming weeks? I do believe this could spark go further than what it has started by now. But I believe that with us in the taxi industry and all the relevant uh, entities, if we come together and be able to sit down and work around how we're going to strategize this thing and find a way that we can form a, a sustainable way of working, it will actually benefit all the people because we're not representing Uber or Bolt, we're representing the drivers. And our interest is in the well-being and the security of the drivers. And drivers don't want anything besides making a, a, a means to, to their lives. We only want to make money and support our families. We don't care about the other entities, what is going on in the background. So if every uh, the people that are actually concerned about this could come forward and say, we are here, we need to listen, and how can we work together and coexist in the business? Because we don't rely actually on going to malls or any places to look for clients. Clients look for us from an app. We are requested to give a service, and we provide a service, and we leave the place. So that's the only thing we are doing. It, I don't see us affecting any transport industry, but we can coexist if only we can be adults and sit down and speak like human beings. Uh, the taxi industry, also the mini bus takes and the meter takes, we have less concern that the prices that you give on Ford and also and, uh, on Uber are not fair to them, and hence uh, clients that end up going to you. Is there not uh, maybe a resolution that you can come to to say maybe let's cost in a certain way instead of having all those uh, discounts and all those because they're complaining about this? Unfortunately, I can tell you from our perspective as an association and as a driver on the ground that we, we try to cap uh, the thing of the taxi industry by limiting the people that go into a vehicle and the kind of load that people are putting in the vehicle. But also, the clients themselves need to be educated about the system itself. To understand when you request a go, it's only two clients. 
if you're requesting an extra light, you have so many people that you're taking, that would not interfere with it, any taxi industry. But also the drivers are to be blamed. So some drivers are desperate and they end up taking four people for a price of 29 rand for four people, of which it will frustrate any business. So with that, we need to have educational um, teachings on our drivers and the community itself. But that will need funding uh, structures whereby even the government can come in and subsidize the business on, on our associations and say, listen guys, we recognize you and this is what we can give to you guys. And we can be able to educate and also educate the industry itself and try and show uh, and work together with the other transport entities. So much for your thank time. You, you we much. do appreciate it. Um, so there you have it, uh, um, I think there is some uh, clarity in terms of what uh, the Soweto E-Hailing Association has to say with regards to what they believe transpired here yesterday. I also just want to highlight the fact that we have reached out to the mall management and they have indicated they will be releasing a statement in a short while. We do know that uh, all stakeholders involved and affected are set to meet um, this afternoon at one o'clock at the police station to probably get to the bottom of this. So I do think it's important to avoid speculating at this stage as to whether or not it's got to do with minibus taxis and Uber Bolt drivers. It seems as though there is a separate issue here about unregistered Bolt and Uber drivers not using the app to get customers and basically charging customers less, causing a problem for those that are registered. Mm. And as we were, of course, speaking to the the gentleman Heidi we just uh, also received this uh, press statement by uh, the SAPS saying the police are investigating a case of attempted murder and malicious damage to a property following a fight between minibus taxi drivers and few drivers believed to be e-hailing drivers out at Mabonya Mall. So it seems four more vehicles, according to the SAPS, were also uh, damaged at the stage. The police saying they cannot confirm the identity of the victims and uh, whether they are indeed e-hailing drivers pending this investigation, but no arrests have been made so far but the police maintain a presence in the area ensuring stability and safety of the commuters so while you were having that engagement of course with the association representing uh, e-hailing drivers Bolt and Uber drivers the police as well uh, through their media inquiry rep that's Colonel Dimakazo Nebuli was releasing the statement out to the media so it seems like the more management will release their statement uh, we've heard from the association but uh, that while that meet is expected at 1 p.m. out in the police station a media release so press release by the SAPS has also been issued. Heidi, we'll leave it there for now, colleague. Thank you so much for this update. As soon as there are any other developments, we'll cross back uh, to my colleague Heidi Jockers, following closely as to what could have been the motive uh, behind the torching, setting a light of vehicles out at Maboya Mall. We understand that uh, um, people also, about three of them, uh, being equally injured, and uh, all three victims, according to the SAPS statement, were thus taken to a local hospital.